This is the Algebraic and Geometric Proofs tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about eight different properties of equality. You may have seen some of these properties of equality in Algebra 1, but we're going to go over them and their implications for geometry. Rather than study all eight of these at once, we're going to do them four at a time. So let me get rid of these eight, and I'll bring up the first four. Let's begin at the top left with the addition property of equality which states that if x is equal to y, then x plus z must be equal to y plus z. So, for example, if x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 3, then x is equal to y. And let's just say that z is equal to 4. Well then, according to the addition property of equality, x plus z, so 3 plus 4, must be the same as y plus z, which is also 3 plus 4. So in this case, 7 is equal to 7. They're called properties of equality because they should be equal at the end. Let's take a look at the subtraction property of equality. If x is equal to y, then x minus z is equal to y minus z. We'll go ahead and use the same values for x, y, and z that we used previously. So, if 3 minus 4 is the x minus z side of the equation, 3 minus 4 would also be the y minus z side of the equation. So in this case, negative 1 is equal to negative 1, which is true, and they're equal because it's the subtraction property of equality. What we're doing is subtracting from both sides like this. How about the division property of equality? If x is equal to y, and z is not equal to 0, then x over z is equal to y over z. We can continue to use the x, y, and z from our previous examples. x being 3 divided by 4, which is z, is equal to y, which is also 3, divided by z, which is 4. That's true, too. They're equal, like they should be. And the multiplication property of equality, same thing. We'll use the x, y, and z that we've been using before. So x times z, 3 times 4, must equal y times z, which is also 3 times 4 since x and y are equal. So 12 is equal to 12. So again, equal as they should be. These steps are important because what you're doing when you're solving algebra problems and geometry problems is you're actually taking equations or word problems and breaking them down step by step. In some cases, you may need to add something to both sides to help re remove things from the equation. Or you may need to divide by something or multiply some by something to, to keep paring down that, that problem into an end result answer, such as x equals 5 or something like that. So what you're doing is using these properties of equality when you do that. And they're listed in geometry because we have things called proofs in geometry where we have to establish our reasoning for how we did a problem. It's to show an understanding, a mastery behind the math involved. Now let's take a look at the next four properties of equalities. Here at the top left we have the reflexive property of equality, which essentially states x is equal to x, that at any given time 3 is equal to 3, or 5 is equal to 5 or even a variable x is equal to x. It's often important at the end of a problem or even during in geometry to establish why you're doing something. If you want to say that segment AB is equal to itself, segment AB, sometimes that's important in geometry and we're going to see that later in practice problems. The substitution property of equality states that if x is equal to y, then y can be plugged in for x in any equation. For example, if x were equal to 3, and we had the equation 3x plus 5 is equal to 14, then in theory, according to the substitution property of equality, if we were to substitute that value for 3 in for x, it should also equal 14. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 5 is equal to 14, as it should be. 
again, we end up with two things equal to each other because it's a property of equality. Take a look at the transitive property of equality. If x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then x is equal to z. This actually reminds me of the law of syllogism in geometry. So if x were equal to 3 and y were equal to 3 and z were equal to 3, then not only would x equal y, but x would also equal z because of the transitive property of equality. The symmetric property of equality states that if x is equal to y, then y must also be equal to x. So if you were taking a look at some figure in geometry and you were to say that, let's say, segment AB is equal to segment BC, then you could also state the reverse, that segment BC must be equal to segment AB. Now I know some of these seem obvious and redundant. But what you're doing when you figure out problems in algebra or geometry, you're actually, your brain is breaking these things down into steps and rapidly solving each of these steps. So fast, in fact, that it seems like you're just arriving at an answer, oftentimes, without doing any of these steps. But in truth, your brain has actually done these steps for you. The tricky part about proofs is to understand that your brain has taken care of that for you because that's what it's there for. And then to be able to logically break down a problem into each of these properties of equality. These properties have been established over hundreds of years in math. And they're there because it's an important exercise for all of us to be able to establish our reasoning for things, to come up with valid proof, valid reasons for why our answer is what it is. You want to be able to defend your reason when you come up with an answer. And the way to defend it is with these known and understood proofs, these properties of equality that will always stand true. If you can break your answer down using these properties of equality, break it down into step by step, then you can offer irrefutable proof that your answer is correct. And that's what this math proving is all about.